directly controlling all our hot, leathery assassins from the Aficio Ass Asylum. Leathery assassins. <laughs> it's like you like these motherfuckers in gimp suits. Yo, what's going on you guys? This is your boy RBG, aka the Random Black Gamer, here with me, myself, and I on the ones and twos, and this is We Ain't Seen the Reactions, the place where I react to everything I ain't never seen. And if you're read by the title, it's time to jump into that video game territory once again, you guys, for some more Warhammer 40k reactions. Now the last time we reacted to Warhammer 40k, we had some boo-boos, you know, like some minor setbacks. I thought I was going to be reacting to see how actual space marines are made, you know, how they're built from the ground up to become these space debos that we know them to be. But unfortunately, I was clickbaited by the actual people that uploaded it, and I apologize for that, but I am going to be watching a video that goes into detail on how those things are created. I just wanted to see how they were made visually, but it is what it is. Today, we're going to be doing something a bit different. We're going to take a step back from that dark and serious atmosphere and jump back into that comical atmosphere sphere that we kind of got introduced to by way of Bricky's videos except this time we're not going to be reacting to Bricky's videos we're actually going to be reacting to somebody else by the name of Brava Albusa who has taken it upon himself to create his own little comedic uh, video series which is titled if the emperor had a text-to-speech device this sounds funny yet tragic in and of itself because if you know anything about the emperor aka the big booty daddy aka the omni Sia, then you know that his story has been very very sad because um, after suffering from a very harsh wound by way of one of his favorite sons he got bound down to this chair and he's on you know uh, like against his will you know I think under unwilling is an understatement but yeah this guy he's bound to a chair and he's basically just a corpse that's you know forced to keep living uh, like I really love his backstory apparently it's had its fair share of like reconstructions the way they lay out things that happened how he was made from uh, reading what I read he was made by the way of like thousands of shaman after becoming very uh, scarce in numbers you know like uh, humanity humanity continues to grow dark and they thought of this brilliant idea of sacrificing themselves and reincarnating in one human as opposed to multiple because that's always been a thing with the uh, the shaman apparently they can reincarnate as many times as they want to but they decided to just do the fusion dance into one character which is now the emperor of mankind and this guy he also has some tragic stuff happening like apparently his dad and uncle got into it and the uncle killed the dad and this nigga he's so tough he stared at the uncle and made his heart stop and decided enough is enough and it's time to change things you know mankind needs some rules and regulations so um yeah this guy he he doesn't really have the ability to speak so i think this is an interesting concept the 140k community they always just come up with these great things man they find a way to make it more interesting for newer people who aren't really used to this you know the casual goers they find a way to get the casuals into the series and i think this is going to be yet another way that i'm just going to keep on going with this and hopefully you guys enjoy do me the biggest favor guys let's get this like goal to 1k smash that like button and let's get it to 1k that way we can be real sure that you guys are enjoying these War warhammer 40k reactions and i can do more for you but I, without further ado let's go ahead and jump into this, this is going to be episode one titled adorable adorable centurium i cannot speak today but um here we go Is this the construction of the chair? Or is this something else? What is that? Or is that a washing machine? I really do hope this works. Is everything prepared? A text of speech device has been implemented for Stodian. It appears to be functioning properly, unlike your feeble flesh. Of course. You have to be pompous about it. I conversing with his little subjects once more. And I shall be the first to speak with him. I could just take off my arm. No! <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 I can feel my armor tightening. <laughs> oh, I'm already loving this. Well, my divine lord, we have managed to implement a text to speak. 
wish to buy us to your glorious golden throne. Please, Lord, speak to us. <laughs> you shitheads! <laughs> About fucking time. At last! I'm a glorious lord who command us once again! I have so many things to complain about. Boy! First of all, why do I only have a fucking glass eye on one of my eyes? Is that really necessary? <laughs> and what is with these ultra smirts that I keep hearing about? Oh man, off to a great start already, man. Like, if I was the emperor and I've been sitting on this damn shit container for at least 10,000 uh, like, of years, I would also have a lot to complain about. Like, there have been so many things that these asshat off-screen humans have been doing since this guy's been sitting there. And he can't say a fucking word. He can only be used as this damn uh, wireless router to get them back and forth through the warp. So, yeah, like, the whole eye thing... Um, obviously that's for like aesthetic purposes you know it's to make him look badass you know but like we don't really ask questions about why they would do it as opposed to the actual artist that created this concept so that's hilarious already but uh let's get back into this uh, oh um wait are, are you referring to the ultramarines oh, yes they have some of your greatest warriors well that certainly fucking explains it it seems like their baby blue heraldry have earned them a most righteous nickname. For that matter, <laughs> I always thought they looked terrible. Do they still have that fucking toilet seat as their insignia? Well, yes, <laughs> they do, my lord. They keep it on the alpha, man. Oh, well, all right then. I always thought he was the greatest of my 20 prime arc sons. Well, that's excellent, my lord. The greatest lord. little derivative pile of blueberry pudding pop that <laughs> You copy and paste bastards! Is he still alive? Barely. He was almost killed. He's currently in status back in the old parade's home world of a crowd. Cut his life support and tell that stupid fucking smurf village to fuck right off. <laughs> and uninterrupted chatting is drilling into my skull as if they were the immensely sanctimonious love child of Tinnitus and the jackhammer. <laughs> the pain of a million ripped out nose hairs are but a tender massage compared to this inexpressible ultra torture. Uh, Boy. Well, I think you're already regretting this. I can do. But at least you still have our mighty great knights. I never created anything called Grey Knights. Boy. They are the greatest of Persian demons in the Imperium. They're all psychers, and they come up with the most glorious ways of killing the It's only one Alpha Psyker up in this motherfucker. Bring in the Dread Knights! <laughs> oh, greetings, my glorious Emperor. It is an honor. Oh, myself. What the fucking fuck is that stupid? <laughs> <laughs> what is this Michael Bay bullshit? I have ever fucking seen ever. If I still had eyes, I would require <laughs> someone to deposit Prometheum infused floor cleaner into them. What terrible, oh my God. terrible person designed this? The, the roast is real. This marvelous machine was discovered by the Grey Knights and is held secretly for all inferior Astartes chapters. We are the <laughs> It's like Thundercles, is that you? He is the mightiest of great knights. Mm. He is currently stuck in the warp, killing demons daily, pillaging demonic villages, and vandalizing the chaos gods' property like some kind of glorious rascal. He has even written a name on a demon Primarch's heart. Okay. The love of all stop signs in the galaxy. Sis <laughs> and fucking desist. <laughs> what in the fuck? That is actually very cute. Look at its little legs and oversized body. Aww. Come to Papa, you. What? Wait, no, Tom! <laughs> yes. This is funny, Tommy. Well, my lord. I don't know about you, but I feel this is the start of something absolutely glorious. Shut your face, you fucking banana. Yes, my lord. You uncle fucker. <laughs> Yes. Okay, so this is really good, guys. Like, this is hilarious. Uh, it's like we always wonder what the king actually thinks or the emperor actually thinks about all the things that have unfolded, you know, that he has to bear witness to but simply can't talk. 
uh, we are under the assumption that he keeps on going. The reason why he lives is because he loves humanity that much that he wants to see them prevail. That was always the goal to, you know, have the humanity get on the right track and not be, you know, embrace or, you know, susceptible to the chaos that's growing within humanity. Like this guy, yeah, everything he's saying is it's warranted you know like there are so many things that have happened like humanity it's like warhammer 40k like when i was watching the cutscenes, the one thing that i kept saying that it was like a waste of resources because the more inventions they create the more soldiers they produce the more shit just falls to shit like there's no other way to put it and we're seeing that now the way he's just grilling all these guys and basically just roasting the fuck out of him is hilarious like he's really getting his shit off and i am enjoying it but anyways let's go ahead and react to episode two which is titled religiously or uh, religiosity okay now we know how the emperor feels about religion if i'm not mistaken he does not like it in the slightest so let's hear what he has to say about this big daddy i don't think he gonna feel it here we go So, let me get this straight. It has been 10,000 years since my angsty asshole of a son Horos made me a paraplegic and put <laughs> on this throne. That is correct, my lord. How the fuck did you all survive for 10,000 years without Boy. a crowd? Well, my lord, the Imperium has safely preserved the teachings and followed it for all these years, always submitting to your superior will. That's a relief. For a second, I thought you guys would have turned into some giant megalomaniacal group of religious people running around yes, killing each other. Yes, that's exactly what they did. Or something like that. Oh, it's no, the zealots to the fullest. We would never stoop so low. <laughs> the only God we would ever worship is the one true God of all this you, of course. Everything else is heresy. Are you fucking serious? Oh, what is upsetting you, almighty God Emperor of Mankind? <laughs> I knew this would fucking happen. Yep. Oh, my lord, you don't have to worry about anything. The Ecclesiarchy and the Imperial Inquisition both make sure that the people of the Imperium retain their faith in you and you alone by making sure that no one knows about the corrupting powers of chaos. Really? And if they somehow figure it out, they'll just exterminate the planet and it's all safe again. <laughs> the Ecclesiarchy? The Inquisition? Are you serious, damn IT really well sir? <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's beating himself in the face with his dick now because of you. Okay. Remember the age of strife? Um, aren't you referring to the age of apostasy, sir? No. No. The age of strife. Let me tell you. It was when asshole Sigurds first started appearing, and all of asshole mankind started fighting each other over asshole reasons. <laughs> that is when I first emerged. I destroyed all asshole religions that existed on Terra. Do you want to know why? Because you are the one true god, my lord. Wrong. No. It is because religion is stupid. stupid it's it's a boy. That makes you into an asshole. This is it's like a cesspool of Reddit arguments. Signing the imperial truth that equality, science, and galaxy conquests is the way to go, and religion needs to be thrown out a window. Tito Divinitatis, telling us that you are our one true god. Get that living La Vida Loca shit out of here, sir. But yeah, the Emperor has a point, man. Like, as much as I am, you know, like, a religious person, I'm just not into religion because there are so many different things that clash, uh, so many different ideologies. It just causes more confusion than it helps. And, like, I feel like that's one of the reasons why the Emperor wanted people to stay away from that. Like, the only religious thing or esoteric thing that he really just believed in or knew of was the, uh, the Chaos Gods, which are one of the key factors into why mankind has become the shit factory that it is now and this poor guy I, I'm, I'm betting he's wondering why humanity has lasted this long like he says like how were you guys able to go this long without me it's like what did you do you have defiled everything and yeah this is what every religious zealot needs you know the ones that think that their religion is better than the next and by proxy they think they're better than other people that don't follow religion at all but let's get back into this that was written by my whiny bitch of a son, Lurgar, who later Lord decided Lord. to dress up in spikes, scarlet red armor, worship some dark gods, and be really fucking edgy. Sounds like Stupid a Metalocalypse cast member. Faces. 
Ah, well, I see, my lord. Now, where is my centurion? Hey. Yes, this is true happiness. Cute centurion. So what is this age of apostasy that you mentioned? Um. Yeah. What about oh, it? Yeah. Come on. How do I put this delicately? <laughs> yeah. So it just seems like a lot of catching up to do. Which, if this is a series, God knows how long it is. You know, it probably has thousands of episodes because this is fucking ten thousand years of exposition that the king is having to go through right now. So much fuckery has happened since he got put on his decrepit chair. You know, his lazy boy. Um, the next episode we're going to dive into is going to be episode three, The Age of Apostasy. So let's see how this goes. How is the king or the emperor going to read him now? Let's see. Really? Yes, my lord. This happened. On behalf of all mankind, I'm really sorry, my lord. No, don't apologize. I really am really sorry. A thousand lashes with a wet noodle. Became the whole of mankind and grow to become a state religion of the Imperium, becoming this fucking ecclesiarchy thing. And then people start to cut their own fucking spleen out, waving it around and throwing it at people, all in a pool of their own jizz and blood to. <laughs> Really Jizz sorry. cool. And then, you let some power-hungry motherfucking bureaucrat become the master of both the administratum and that overly dominant ecclesiarchy grog shit, effectively controlling all our hot, leathery assassins from the Ephesio Assassin and all assholes. <laughs> leathery <laughs> assassins. <laughs> it's like you like these motherfuckers in gimp suits. And then, this balls to the walls paramount of imperial incompetence that has become your leader starts to kill and torture anyone and everyone he feels like because it makes his bureaucrat balls tingle with delight in this <laughs> massive, totally pointless purge of all mankind. Pointless addition, boners. He did all this with the most evil fucking name I've ever heard. Go Vandire. Seriously, what? how could you ever trust a guy with that name? G-O-G-E Vandire. That name is just screaming, I'm gonna take your eyes sockets and put my penis <laughs> into them. Ew. Fuck. Look, my lord. The events of the Age of Apostasy is all a great shame upon the Imperium, but he was brought to justice in the end. <laughs> Why, I was even there when it happened. Several Astartes chapter masters and the Mechanicus Fabricator General came around and told us what Bandaya had been up to all this time. And then we helped out by conveying the truth of the matter to the leader of Vandaya's bodyguards, the Bride of the Emperor, <laughs> by directing her straight to you. Why, I remember it all like it was yesterday. Oh. Five thousand years the earlier. The Emperor himself, upon the golden throne of Terra. He is so beautiful. I have never seen anything as graceful and bewitching in all my life. I know, right? And we get to clean his entire body several times a week. Wow. So unfathomably jealous, I could burn you all right now. <laughs> so don't Crazy me. bitch. But still. Right. Anyway, as you can see, Van Dyer is not the one you're supposed to be looking up to. He doesn't do anything but deceive to gain more power. He is a madman, and his reign of blood must be stopped. <laughs> what the fuck is up with her? Uh, are you even is she creaming her armor right now? Oh, I'm. I'm sorry, I spaced out. The Emperor has some quite divine looking abs. This bitch and her medieval dishwashing gloves have gone insane. She is a sadistic woman. I can already tell just by hearing the way she talks and she moans about all these different things that this guy describes. Yeah, like that that right there, that, that that's a bit weird to me. But it's hilarious. You know what this puts me in the mind of? If you guys are familiar with Adult Swim, they had this show that came on in like the early 2000s called C Lab 2021, if I'm not mistaken. And they had the characters that didn't have that much articulation in their bodies and they would kind of just move like this right here, you know. But they had certain standard animations that they would use in case they wanted to show them moving. That's what this puts me in the mind of. And I was a big advocate of that show. I always screamed to the highest mountain that it was very good and people should check it out because it's funny. And I'm getting C Lab 2021 vibes from this, you know. So, uh, yeah, very funny, man.
Actually, those are just bones jutting out. But anyway, I know you have served Van Dyer for a long time, but his megalomaniacal ways must come to an end. Oh. Okay. <laughs> you have committed the ultimate heresy. Oh, God. Not only have you turned your back on the Emperor and stepped from his light, you have profaned his name and almost destroyed everything he has striven to build. You have perverted and twisted the path he has laid for mankind to tread. <laughs> your own decrees have stated there can be no mercy for such a criminal. I renounce your lordship. You walk in the darkness and cannot be allowed to live. Your sentence has been long overdue, and now it is time for you to die. Oh, God. Time to die. I'm <laughs> too busy. <laughs> I think I remember that too. Some girl came in here and stared at me with depraved, flustered eyes. If I had the proper bodily components left, I would probably have gotten a fairly insecure boner. That's the end of the series for you. <laughs> you haven't. I can't stand these bitches. Marines, have you? Huh? Oh no, that isn't even possible. Only the sisterhood. The deviant artists of pen and parchment ever come up with something like that. <laughs> and if we can catch one of them, process, we have the process. It's like. Fire. Space nuns in scandal clad outfits. Only contain males. No girls nope. allowed. They are okay, young. well. Whatever you say, my lord. So, what's up with this Inquisition thing? Oh boy. <laughs> we're only getting started. Okay, so yeah, uh, now we're talking about the different apostles, you know, like the different factions essentially that apparently they do everything under the will of the emperor of mankind which we all know is a bunch of hoobla it's just ways for them to come up with excuses to inflict their own laws and regulations against other people that aren't necessarily humans or ones that don't agree to their creed you know like that right there it's like mankind can be very dangerous you know when they have like certain principles it's cool you know we all have things that we strive to be and what we want but when you have somebody who's basically like um what's a real figure that i could use uh kim jong un and kim jong il all the kim jong dongs up in uh north korea that basically just make everything about them they have their own um set of rules that you have to apply you have to abide to or you'll be shot in front of an audience that's forced to clap that's the only thing i can think of when i see this that's that describes the imperium at its fullest you know there's so many crazy religious zealots and shit. but yeah i was wondering i was like what is he gonna think about the uh adeptus sororitas like this these women like was it always like, did it always have women up in it, or was it exclusively for men? Because that's the way I've seen all the different Primarchs at first. It's like he had, like, so many different Primarchs, which just consisted of only men. But now, you know, uh, equal rights has become a thing. Pronouns are a thing up in the Warhammer 40K or the year 40K. So, uh, yeah, man. But uh, let's go ahead and dive up into this next one, yo. Uh, we're on episode 4. Or episode three, so this is gonna be episode four, which is titled The Inquisition. Oh shit, let's see what you got to say about these crazy motherfuckers that are always casting judgment. Here you go. Motherfuckers that blow up planets when motherfuckers do like drop pieces of gum paper on the floor. Actually, I think I have to go now. Stop. No. You're telling me about this Inquisition thing. Oh, hold it. Wow. <laughs> I think that's your regular everyday meal of a thousand sacrifice souls being prepared. Better go and check on it. What was that? Nothing, my lord. <laughs> Please tell me you have some kind of psychic power that could stop him from running. Out. What the? No. You are not going anywhere until you tell me about the Inquisition. How did you do that? Have you forgotten? Who I am? I am. I sit around and randomly shit out warp storms daily because I <laughs> Oh my god. Why are there so many warp I shat out at least five warp storms during the presentation. Really, what the fuck have you all become? Labor camps and sterilizations? Murder millions over bare superstition? <laughs> of actually loyal Astartes? 
had thousands of Imperial planets and its valuable assets destroyed because some by faffed with barbed wire and accidentally summoned a demon or two. Be painfully hypocritical and use Xenos and demonic weaponry in aid in order to carry across my will. Boy, that's the thing! That's the thing that gets me about these motherfuckers. They... They're always... There's always gonna be a gray area here. It's like... Even though they are these xenophobic motherfifers and they see all these different forms of sorcery as heresy to the Imperium, they occasionally use these forms of sorcery to get what they want. That is the biggest form of hypocrisy I've ever seen and I'm glad the Emperor is calling him out on that man. Imp, he, he got the shit on lock. He, even though he's 10,000 years off, you know, he's he's uh, basically a boomer that doesn't know how, um, you know, know that we're going paperless up in this war-ridden society or this war-ridden galaxy, you know, and we're, we're more, we're doing e-bills now. He, he knows that, you know, like he, he, he can understand how e-bills work. We're not paperless. We're, we're going paperless now, you know, like we, we don't take physical mail. We don't send in money orders of ass kickings anymore. We, we do this shit paperless. So, uh, yeah, uh, shout out to the emperor for calling this dude out on this bullshit. And especially the um, these Inquisition motherfuckers, these space judges. But uh, let's get back into this. The Inquisition's works has saved mankind on numerous occasions. Yeah, right. Like during the High Fleet Leviathan Crisis, where the Inquisitor, known as Cryptman, stepped forward. The Tyranids, which he had previously named them, had managed to outmaneuver the Imperium, but thanks to Cryptman, their threat was abolished. <laughs> he had managed to have a Mangos concoct a poison against the Tyranids, which they then managed to defeat them entirely with. Am I gonna have to start writing a list over things I don't know what the fuck you are talking about because one of the walls are tyrannic? Uh, right. It's kinda nasty. But still, it was quite heroic of him. And how much did this threat cost to abolish? Um, well, let's just say he didn't have the luxury to count the cost. Anyway. There was also one time during the first War of Armageddon where the Grey Knights helped the Space Wolves fight off a demon Primarch. Huh. Oh, oh lord. Now you are bringing up those fucking Grey Knights again. With that stupid ass baby carrier Dread Knight thing. My existent <laughs> eyes are still sore from seeing that abomination. Yes, but truly the Space Wolves received great aid from the Grey Knights in their battle. And then what? Uh... What do you mean? What happened after the battle had ended? Uh, well... <laughs> the Space Wolves kind of wanted to save the survivors of the war, but the Inquisition sort of wanted to put them into labor camps and to sterilize them and oh, have them die off, which the... Um... Space Wolves didn't really like that much, <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> Well, there was a Cold War, and the Grey Knights betrayed the Space Wolves, and some shit happened, but that isn't important. No, don't make light <laughs> of this shit. Because, well, one time the Grey Knights stopped a bloodthirst for using an ancient, very dangerous technology known as the Blood Tide from destroying a world, and it was truly glorious. And wow. Then, oh shit, um... And then what? They killed a massive amount of innocent sisters of battle and adorned their armor in their blood, but... <sighs> Fucking... Stop. This organization, however it came to fucking be, was obviously pure, concentrated, whole grain stupidity. And <laughs> whole grain? The created in the first place is obviously Gluten free stupidity. Idiot. They walk around and do whatever they fucking feel like while laughing really snarky at the plebeian communities they see before them, all while having themselves and all their troops ornate in loads of fucking shiny shit and skulls to look oh so emperor worshipping <laughs> when really they are just creeps in trench coats. And yes! That's all they will ever be. Now, ready yourself, send this message to the scribes. I want it sent to every corner of the fucking galaxy. I, the Emperor of Mankind, hereby make my <laughs> official decree that all organizations contained within the Holy Orders of the Emperor's Inquisition and Adeptus Minis Dorum shall be disbanded and removed from existence. All who work for either organization shall return to their sector of birth and work there as a regular citizen once more. All who refuse shall be branded renegades until they have given up their future. Well, he is reading him off a Star Wars credit scroll. Of laws. Emperor of mankind. Yes, I shall go ahead and do that immediately, my lord. I'll be back when I'm finished. <laughs> this is all fucking nuts. 
Seriously, how it could an organization like this bring into Exista? Wait a moment, I remember something. What was that? Shit fuck. Shit. This can't be for real. <laughs> Malkador. Malkador? Who is that? Probably missing it, but... Okay, it's gonna go into flashback. Ooh. Lord Inquisitor Fyodor Karn. What is it? Do not waste my time. I'm very busy initiating exterminatus on this mining world for not giving me this shiny shit we need. <laughs> Seriously, we can't have our soldiers walking around without the blame. A very important message has been sent to you directly from Holy Terror itself. What is it about? Here, read it. Hey, what are we looking at here? What? This is heresy! <laughs> oh, man. That was good. I wasn't sure what that part right there was about, but the voice acting in this is really good. Shout outs to the people that actually worked on the voices for these to bring these characters to life, you know, like actually give them more personality. Like, I like the little AI voice that they use, and it makes this guy sound like he was bitten by a radioactive Stephen Hawkins. You know, um, the Emperor in particular I'm talking about here. Yeah, he, he has a very funny way he talks, and I like that he sounds almost like a dude, bro. Um, that's just confused. It's almost like Ryan Reynolds would play a good Emperor if he had this personality. You, you guys know how Ryan Reynolds likes to use shit knuckle, like dragon farts and shit like that, like up in um, the Deadpool movie series. Uh, so much, so much they can do, man. Like the 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 um, possibilities are endless, you know. And like I say, I hope this thing continues to go on for as long as it can because, like. It's 10,000 years worth of material. Like, you can't go wrong with that. But anyways, let's go ahead and jump into the fifth part of this thing, which is titled Malkador the Hero. Or is he? Uh, let's do this. My lord, the deed has been done. And it took a fuckload of time. At least 3,000 scribes died, and I somehow managed to get a headache in the process. But the message has been sent to all inquisitorial and ecclesiarchal organizations in the galaxy. There you go. Better send that shit. Why is he just sitting there? Is he on charge? My lord? Is his Bluetooth off? Hello? Are you, are you awake? Somebody get this guy a wireless dongle. Oh shit. We're going inside his mind. I have completed the mission. Please, hmm. if you will oversee them, I will be ready to make my sacrifice. You have done well, my faithful servant. I trusted you to find me the most inquisitive and trustworthy this galaxy has to offer, and you succeeded. I approve of your selection, Malkador. Somebody get this guy a pop filter. Shit. Is this one of the shaman? Or is this somebody else? Or is that Horus? This is gonna turn into a wet dream for this guy. Behold the greatest sacrifice of our age. Malgador the Sigilate is no more. Henceforth, he shall always and only ever be Malkador, the hero. Hey, let's get it. We had a little bit of serious dialogue. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, my lord, you're awake? Of course I am, you fuck studies. <laughs> you see when people are having dramatic flashbacks? Oh, um, I'm really sorry, my lord. Anyway, the deed has been done. 
The message has been conveyed. Good. How they dare shit upon a sacrifice that my most loyal servant ever made by turning the organization he laid the foundation for into an elitist shit fest is inexcusable. <laughs> Excuse me, my lord. I don't think I follow. Malkador the Almost. Hero, previously known as Malkador the Sigilate. He was my bro for life, and the first High Lord of Terra. He was the one who ruled and spread the word of the Imperium in my stead while I was tinkering with his throne. If it weren't for that disappointment of a son Magnus the Bookworm, who just had to fall to the temptation just. of chaos, and sent a brain-shattering psychic phone call to me with his powers, the barriers that protected my greatest project, the webway of mankind, wouldn't have been ruined, and Malkator wouldn't have had to make his sacrifice. In vain. Oh. So, uh... Yeah. You fucked up. Magnus's fault? Definitely. Yeah. If I could, I'd brutally spank Magnus <laughs> until his ass would turn so red that his face would look pale in comparison. Ah, I see. Come to think of it, is Magnus still alive? Hmm. Last time I heard he's a demon prince now, residing in the Eye of Terror on the planet of the Sorceress. Oh, wow. Sounds really fucking nerdy. Just like him. <laughs> he's an edge lord now. I to send those ultramarine smurfs there and try to get a hold of Magnus and then bring them here to me. If they fail, they'll at least not be so fucking snobby anymore. And if they succeed, I'll get to spank Magnus so it's all good. It's Very all good, dog. It's all good. Now, I wonder how the disbanding of all those shitty cult organizations is going. There is no doubt about it, fellow Inquisitors. <laughs> Whoever sent this message is a heretic. Get the there fuck out of here. He doesn't believe. But then it the holy god emperor of mankind. This must be the <laughs> A cult. It must be a cult. Yes, a gene stealer cult. We cannot let this heretic keep doing what he is doing. <laughs> this has to be some kind of AI programming. I think so. That should be kind of counter. We got a space ice tea? Counterintuitive? What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> Cannot perform exterminatis of holy terror yet. But what we can do is send an inquisitorial representative there as one of the High Lords of Terror, and then argue with the rest of the High Lords until they allow us to perform a thorough search and purge of our planet. Wow. Oh, that sounds real good. It should be like a manual exterminatus. <laughs> with more. Dorking and burning buildings. Maybe we can check if there is a tomb world while we're at it. Now, my brothers and sisters, radical or puritan, the only thing you need to do is vote for me. Vote for As me. As your representative. Bruh. I'll be traveling with my feet to Terra. Find the culprit who's behind these messages and kill him for the Emperor. For the Emperor, you idiots. Oh my god, man. Yeah, the Inquisitions are a bunch of asshats, genocidal asshats that'll destroy fucking planets and wipe out different races of people. I, I mean, like, at first when I was hearing about them from Vic Bricky's videos, I was under the impression, like, why, what would it, like, how, how could they deal with these guys, like, if they're the authorities here, like, what would the Emperor think? Like, I was, like, thinking that. I was wondering why, like, what would he do and how it got to this point, which it's worthy of backstory in and of itself. I'm pretty sure there's expanded lore of how humanity just came to this point. You know, we know that there are certain powers that be that were uh, very influential in the way they think, you know, just becoming these religious zealots that find any excuse to wipe out anybody that doesn't agree with their religion. It, that's just how it is. Very dangerous. And once again, a waste of resources. Like these guys waste so much shit to prove a point. And that's the whole world of Warhammer for me. Like trying to prove a point but wasting so much shit and resources to do so. But that was very fun, man. That's gonna do it for us today. Like I might jump into episode six once this video hits 1,000 likes, and you guys always rock out with that, man. You guys have been rocking with me to the fullest, and we always get these things done in a timely manner. I wish all the other communities that I'm in that I do reactions to would get on the same kind of shit that you guys are, because y'all are selling the stars right now. You're going high, man. The stock is up. 
you guys have made it possible for me to actually you know expand my horizon man and i really have enjoyed the ride that i've been having with the warhammer 40k community so shout out to you guys but that's gonna do it for us today guys i hope you enjoyed this reaction hopefully i didn't talk that much i mean i try to interject from time to time i try to pause the video but sometimes i just like to keep the ball rolling you know keep it going without having to pause too much because once again i don't like when people constantly pause the videos so yeah I don't want to be one of them people and be a hypocrite like the Imperium is. But yeah, that's going to do it for us today, guys. If there's anything that I may have missed or got misconstrued, by all means, drop it in the comment section below and tell me what you liked or disliked about these videos. Did you like them? Do you feel like they make light of the lore of Warhammer 40k? Do that. But once again, this is your boy RBG, aka The Random Black Gamer. We ain't seen the reactions. I'll catch you guys on the next reactions to some more Warhammer 40k if the Emperor had a text-to-speech device. Peace.